Today we are going to study this integral, the integral of x to the power of x. This is sometimes called the Bernoulli integral, and actually, fun fact, I have to be more precise than that because there is a whole family of Bernoullis, like eight of them who are actively publishing research mathematician. This was John Bernoulli. But nevertheless, it's a really cool integral with a bunch of different ideas to try and solve it. But first, I just want to play around with, like, what is the function x to the x actually doing on the interval 0 to 1? If I plot the function x to the x, well, this is what I get, this pretty plot, where x to the x is 1 at the value of both 1 and 0. 1 shouldn't be surprising, 1 to the 1 is 1, but 0 to the 0 I'm calling 1, or at least I'm saying that the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of x to the x is equal to the value of 1. It's easy to get surprised by this because there's a tension when you talk about x to the x when x is 0. If you take 0 to any number, you think it should be 0. But if you take any number to the power of 0, like 7 to the 0, you'd say that was 1. So which of those should dominate our definition of what x to the x is? You can actually evaluate this limit by, say, L'Hopital's rule. I'll put up a very quick proof here if you want to pause and walk through it yourself. Or I can just come here and evaluate it and see that indeed the value actually is 1. This software that I'm using, by the way, is Maple Learn, which is the sponsor of today's video. Thank you to Maple Learn. More about them at the end. It's also worth noting that the plot just drops off for negative values. And this is because if you take something like negative a half to the power of negative a half, you're taking the square root of a negative number not allowed over the real numbers. There are actually some values where it's not problematic to the left, like negative one-third to the power of negative one-third, not a problem. But so many of them are problems that we're just not going to sketch anything to the left of x equal to zero. Now it is time for us to try and integrate this. The first little trick is actually the same trick that I would do if I was trying to take the derivative of x to the x. That is, I want to write this as e to the logarithm of x to the x. E and logarithm sort of cancel each other out, so certainly this is an equality, but now I can leverage the power of logarithms. The exponent can be brought out the front and it becomes e to the x logarithm of x. So what can I do? Now, as soon as I see exponential, I think, well, there's lots of stuff I knew about exponentials. In particular, I have the Taylor series for the exponential function. e to the x is nothing but the sum from 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. I'll link a previous video of mine for that. Now, I don't have e to the x exactly, but really this series is a placeholder for e to whatever you might have. So if instead I was taking e to the power of x logarithm of x, I can plug x logarithm x into my series and get, well, precisely this. Okay, so I've transformed my integration problem into an integral of an infinite sum of other expressions. Uh, how can I tackle this? Well, the first thing that I would like to be able to do but I'm not sure whether I can is to just like reverse the order of the summation and the improper integral. So what I'm going to do is act as if I can make this little switcheroo and then I'm going to justify it later on when I understand these integrals a little better. Also, just a bit of cleanup, I noticed that the n factorial in the denominator has nothing to do with the integral. I may as well pull that out and I get this result. So now my task is, how do I evaluate all of these different integrals? That's my goal. Can I integrate all of the entire infinite family of integrals that look a little bit like this? Now, there are a couple ways to tackle this family of infinite integrals. When Bernoulli was originally doing it, what he did was n-fold integration by parts. If you try a few integration by parts, you're going to start noticing a pattern, and indeed it can be done this way, and that I will leave as an exercise for you down in the comments. I'm going to show a different way than integration by parts to tackle this formula. Because when I look at this, I just have some alarm bells going off in my head. Previously on this channel, we've talked about the gamma function, which was a fascinating function. It didn't have logarithms, but it did have exponentials. It was the integral from 0 to infinity, x to the n, e to the minus x dx. And it has the remarkable property that that weird integral is actually just n factorial when n is an integer. And then if 
n isn't an integer, I just get some value. So you can really think of the gamma function as like an extension of the factorial function from the discrete case to a continuous case. It has all sorts of wonderful properties and I'll link a video of me deriving this fact previously. And now when I look at the two of these, I notice that they're really similar. Like they've both got an x to the n in them and then one's got exponentials, one's got logarithms, but I sort of imagine that I could do some sort of u sub and clean them up, transform the one into the other. So how about this as a first possible guess? u is negative logarithm of x. I chose the logarithm because obviously there's lots of logarithms in my integral. And then I made it negative logarithm of x because between zero and one, I know that logarithm is gonna be negative. So I just pull that part of it out. With that u, I can get that du is negative one over x. And I also like to switch the order around, solve for x, e to the minus u is x. Plugging all these facts in, well, I get this. The x to the n has become an e to the minus u to the n. And actually it's become n plus one because you get one more x from the conversion between du and dx. I can also think about my limits of integration. As x goes to zero from the right, well, negative logarithm goes to infinity. That's why there's an infinity on the bottom. Similarly, when x is one, the logarithm is just zero. So this is the integral from infinity up to zero. Let me clean it up. I'll notice at the front I have negative, that was the negative that came from the conversion between du and dx, but I don't like the order of the integrals, so I'm gonna flip them around, zero to infinity, get rid of that negative. I also notice in the integrand I have a minus u to the n. I'll take the minus ones out the front, so I get a minus one to the n out the front. And then the final thing that I'll notice is I've got an e to the minus u to the power of n plus one. I can use the power of exponents and make it e to the negative n plus one times u. This is looking an awfully lot like the gamma function. We have one little bit more cleanup. I always like to have my mathematics as clean as possible. I have the e to the minus n plus one. That can be replaced with just one symbol. Let's call it say v now, as u has been used up. And if I do this and plug it in, I get this integral, where I have an n plus one to the n plus one in the bottom for my conversion from u into v. N of those came from the u to the n, and the n plus one comes from the conversion of du over to dv. Final bit of cleanup, the n plus one to the n plus one in the denominator, I can move that out, has nothing to do with the integral. So this is what I get. This is the result, and I recognize that that is nothing but the gamma function. So I've successfully done some change of variables, take what I had into this thing that I know. This is just n factorial, and I've brought out these various constants out the front that had to do with my change of variables. Final result, minus one to the n over n plus one to the n plus one times n factorial. Okay, now this is sort of a minor computation in the middle of our larger process. So let's just remember where we were. This is what we had started with. We were taking that integral of x to the x, we wrote it as a sum of a bunch of integrals. We have now evaluated what all of those integrals are. I notice that there's an n factorial on the top and the bottom and it simplifies and the final result is thus this power series. If you want to write out the first few terms, it has a really nice format, one over one to the one, minus one over two to the two, plus one over three to the three, and so on. I'll note that this series converges, it alternating plus or minus and decreasing, so via the alternating series test it converges. It also converges absolutely, even if I got rid of the plus minus business by say the ratio test. I'll let the calculus students check that out down in the comments. But the point is, this converges absolutely, which actually retroactively justifies that switching of the summation and the integration. You can do that if the result that you get converges absolutely. Nevertheless, we have an answer. If you want to get an actual number out of this, well, you can come to the series and plug in anything that you like, for example, a maximum value of say 10. Then if I come down here and click approximate, it's gonna give out some decimal 0.78 and so forth that is our approximation for the value of this integral. Two final things to say. First is a plug to the book, Interesting Integrals. I'm gonna put a link down in the description, which is where I found this Burr Newly integral and uh, showed me this sort of this cool methodology. Final thing to say is that this software, as I've mentioned, is Maple Learn, which is the sponsor of today's video. And I'm gonna put a link to this exact worksheet where I describe the method and I show how to use Maple Learn and give a couple challenge examples for you. I'm gonna put a link to that down in the description. Maple Learn is this really cool software that's kind of like a hybrid between a mathematical notebook where you're actually able to, you know, make beautiful little worksheets like this, 
as well as an actual mathematical calculator because it uses the entire Maple engine to be able to evaluate things like derivatives and integrals and limits and all of the good stuff. So I'll put a link to this exact worksheet down in the description and I encourage you to check out Maple Learn. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If any questions, leave them down in the comments below and we'll do some more math in the next video.